Wow, was it good to see you guys. What a wonderful day, a whole day dedicated to success. Uh, and, and I want to start by defining that term. If we're going to spend the day talking about it, we ought to think a little bit about what it really means. For a lot of people in America, the definition of success is money, fame, and power. And I don't buy that at all. I mean, I like those things. I have no, no problem with them, no, nothing against them. But the definition of success that I've always clung to and pursued is when your self-concept and your core values are in harmony with your daily actions and behaviors. In other words, you've given a lot of really serious thought to the life you want to live, the person you want to be, the legacy you want to leave, and you've got some strong core values, and you get up every day and you actually live those, and then at the end of the day, you put your head on your pillow and go, wow, that was awesome, another fantastic. Now, if you become rich, famous, and powerful along the way, that's fine with me. Private jets, island of the Bahamas, that's all cool. But if you get there and you're not living an authentic life and you aren't living by your values, you are not successful. So today, I want you all to keep the definition of success that you have in your own minds and think about it as all these very successful speakers talk about it and realize that it's different for everyone. It's a journey, not a destination. You never get there, and you're always striving for it, which will help me out with my first slide. Um, this is not a dress rehearsal, folks. You got one shot at this as far as I know. And if you want to be successful, you've got to pursue it with passion and vigor and excitement with every fiber of your body. And I, I'll, I'll give you an example. I was outside talking to some of the entrepreneurs this morning, and I think they, they summed it up extremely well. They said, get off your ass and give a shit. And I, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that definition. I like it. Because success doesn't come to you. You have to go to it. You know, successful people willingly do what unsuccessful people are unwilling to do. They get up earlier, they stay up later, but, but here's the idea for me. If you're pursuing something that matches your values, if you're pursuing something that you're passionate about, that's fun, that you enjoy, then it's never work. Every day is fun, every day is play, every day is joy, and every day adds into a higher and higher level of success. Uh, the challenge for all of the speakers for this morning, or all day, were to talk about the secret to success, our secret to success. And I gave this a lot of thought. I've spent four or five weeks preparing this 20-minute talk uh, and really wanted to get in, I realized that I don't have one secret of success. It's been a combination of multiple things that I've, that I've gone to over, and over like touchstones that have helped me to achieve a modicum of success in my career. One of the things I've used over and over again comes from my good friend Tom Morris, who wrote an awesome book called True Success. He's one of America, he is America's leading philosopher, and you didn't know that we had philosophers. This is a full-time philosopher, great guy, brilliant guy, and I'm honored that he's my mentor and friend, and he came up with a great acronym. He said, if you want to be successful in life, you must have a plan. Here's what it stands for. Prepare for the journey, launch into action, adjust or analyze as you go, and network with those who know. One of the things I learned a long time ago is, one of the smartest things that smart people do is steal ideas from other people. Uh, I looked at this and I couldn't come up with anything any better, so we're gonna use Tom's model today and it's with his permission. Uh, we're gonna look at the prepare for the journey first. Here is a question I have and I wanna pose to all of you and it's a very serious question. How many of you in the room right now, if I went back to your house or your office, have a written piece of paper with a very clear, specific, measurable outline of exactly where you plan to have your life and your business five years from now. Raise your hands. That's about 10%. And that is about what, what I find worldwide. Uh, that about 10%, now I'm not saying that writing it out it makes it happen. This is not law of attraction. Uh, I, I'm not, I, write it out and then get your ass in gear. But <laughs> that's law of attraction, attracted to you by going to it. But here's the idea. If you don't know where you're going, it's hard to make the key decisions in life to move you in a direction towards happiness, joy, and success. Uh, it's one of my favorite sayings. When values are clear, decisions are easy. When you've deeply thought about where do I really want to go with my life, what do I really want, what is truly important to me, how do I define success, and you've got it in a clear thing, at least you can get up every day and ask this question. Is what you're doing right now going to take you there? Is this action, is this investment, is this behavior, is this person, is this partner, is this colleague, is this course, is this day spent listening to success going to move me one step closer to my goal? And if it is, you get up and run towards it, and you embrace it, and you take it, and you say, this is going to help me. And if it isn't, then you have the courage to say something incredibly important. No. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to spend time on that. I'm not going to invest in that. That isn't going to help me get where I want to get. So that's, this is a key question about if 
asking where do I want to go and is what I'm doing right now truly going to take me here? That's the plan part. Launch into action. The amount of action you apply determines the amount of results that you get. Uh, and a lot of people, though, when I say launch into action and really make things happen, they, they go, but how, John? How do you do that? It's easy. Just create a checklist. And I'm totally serious here. Look at people who have achieved what you want to achieve, that, ha that, ha that have built the kind of company you want to build, that have kind of created the kind of career, have the created the kind of life that you want, and make a list of everything they did to get there. And then get up every day and say, what can I check off the list today? This is what I did when I started professional speaking. The person that I looked up to who was my mentor and my role model was a gentleman named Tom Peters, wrote a book called In Search of Excellence. Loved the book, I loved the way Tom talked, I loved the way he interacted with audiences, so I sat down and studied Tom Peters. Now I'm not saying fake it till you make it, what I am saying is I looked at it and said, he wrote a book, he traveled worldwide, he did this, he worked at the Pentagon, blah, 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 and I made a list of all the things that got Tom Peters to be Tom Peters, and I said, how can I get up every day and say, do some international travel, write a book, try to win an award, do this stuff. And you know what's funny? It worked. You look up and I go, hey, it's only 25 years I've been doing this and it worked perfectly. It's an overnight success. It's a foolproof plan. You know, it's unbelievable. Um, and if you get to it, actually, there is a secret for success. I mean, if you were to read a, th uh, for those of you that don't know me, I read about 100 to 120 business books a year and I have every year since 1989. I'm a freak. Uh, and, uh, and one of the things if you read, read and read and read and study and look at all the success literature, it really boils down to three key things. Figure out what you really, really want, figure out the price you have to pay to get it, and then get up every day and pay the price. Be incredibly curious. Who, who can I get on my team? How can I get them to help me? Where can I go? Uh, how, you know, what skills will I need? What support will I need? How can I raise the money? Where can I get the, Every day, insanely curious about how can I check some more stuff off my list? Because if you keep checking the list, you keep pursuing success. You keep doing the right things. You keep moving in the right direction. Without the plan, without the vision, without the checklist, you get up every day and hope that things get better. Hope you become more successful. Hope you sell some more widgets. Hope is not a strategy. You know, you can be successful by fate, good luck, you know, and good luck sometimes, but it's one in three zillion. You know, I, I, I get people all the time, what about Mark Zuckerberg? What about the 999,000 other people who aren't Mark Zuckerberg? You know, if you go to, and if you go to most of them, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, overnight success. No, not really. It's been about 11 years. Uh, he spent about, ooh, $400 million to get there. He's got a staff of a couple thousand. It isn't just him and Facebook and a billion. It took some time, it took some planning, it took some help. So let's talk about this from the next level. Adjust, and I like to say analyze as you go. Adjust or analyze as you go. Here's why. You will fail. You're going to screw some stuff up royally. Uh, you're going to lose money. You're going to have companies that go out of business. This is as it should be. This is part of entrepreneurship. This is part of the road to success. But as it says behind me, failure is not fatal. It's just a stepping stone. It's something to learn from and say, I'd prefer not to do that again. Uh, it really hurts when I lose 100,000 or a million dollars. I don't like that so much. Uh, I remember my first boss when I was working at the Rockefeller Foundation allowed me to make some very expensive and stupid mistakes. But I did not make them a second time. I remember the first one I made was one that was the entire, my entire salary for the year. I made a decision and blew it, and I walked into his office ready to be fired or quit. He said, oh, no, 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 you're going to make much bigger mistakes than that while you're here. Trust me, that was a small one. Just tell me, what did you do wrong, and how will you make sure it doesn't happen again? And I explained it to him, and I tried as hard as I could to make sure it didn't happen again. So failure is part of the process. You're going to make mistakes. You know, it's just like school. You're going to fail a quiz. You're going to fail a test. But that doesn't mean you won't get an A in the class eventually and you won't graduate with honors. It's just part of the process. Network with those who know. Uh, as Kristen mentioned, I gave a TED Talk with her uh, about two years ago. And the challenge at the TED Talk was, share with us the single most important thing you've ever learned in your life. Wow. Actually, not hard for me, because here it is. You become what you focus on and like the people you spend time with. Whatever you fill your mind with, Whatever you're reading, studying, looking at, listening to, and learning from, and whoever you spend your time with will directly determine what your life will look like at a decade from now. So you've got to give that some serious thought. Where do I spend my time on? What am I reading, studying, learning? What am I watching? What am I putting in my brain every day? And who am I choosing to spend the most precious asset I have in the world my time with? And you want to make those the best people you possibly can. And by the way, well, there's two things. There's one, the idea of creating a mastermind group. 
Uh, this comes from a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, one of the greatest self-help books. And I see Larry, uh, uh, my friend Larry smiling. He's read it too. Um, the, he, he looked at all the most successful people in the world and, and created a list of what they got to do there. And the number one thing they said that made people super successful was the idea of creating a mastermind group, of creating a group of people that you spend time with that are bright, sharp, smart, and talented with super high integrity where you can learn from them and they will help you and you can go to them and ask for advice and input suggestions and they can do the same for you. Um, in college, this is called a study group. Uh, my story, some of you know it, I failed out of college on the first try, uh, which was not fun, and graduated number three in the United States in my major on the second try. The difference was two differences. I came to Santa Fe, and they turned me around here. I'm a, I'm a very, 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 very proud graduate of Santa Fe. <laughs> Thank you. And then went on to U of F. So step one was getting in the right place around the right people, but second was I started study groups with all my classes. I said, anybody who wants to be in my study group, you're more than welcome, as long as you have a 3.6 GPA or higher. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> Magic. Graduated with honors, did all this other stuff. So the idea is, and it's, it, it's, that's an idea I've taken forward ever since. My first job, I started a mastermind group. When I first moved to Gainesville in my early 30s, I started a mastermind group of young entrepreneurs and business owners my age. Today, I still have a mastermind group of some of the people that I consider some of the smartest, brightest, most talented, and high-integrity people in our community. And I would like the members of my mastermind group that are in attendance today to raise their hands. There's one there, Tim Broom, Mr. Staub, uh, Mr. Costello, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, we've got a few women, just the men showed up today, I guess. But here's the point. I didn't hope that I would find smart people that could help me. I went out and I found who I felt were the smartest, best people in town and asked them to come and spend time with me because I wanted to be surrounded by people that could help me and people that I could help. An unbelievably important idea. And it doesn't have to be someone you know. These are my mentors. Marcus Aurelius, Mr. Gates, Mr. Jobs, Mr. Einstein. I've got a hundred more, Mother Teresa, you could look, Oprah, you got to look and see where are, they don't have to be there. The, think about this, the smartest people in the world put their ideas and their information and their philosophies of success down in a book and it's free at the library or it's free on the internet or it costs 10 or 15 bucks. So you can ask any one of these people to be your personal mentor and they can't refuse you. <laughs> and anyone else you can think of. Isn't that awesome? I mean, we live in, a, in an age now where you have access to more information, more ideas, more things that can help you than ever before, and about 90% of it is free. There is no excuse not to be an expert on success. Think about that. No excuse not to be an expert on success. So, I want to share three models with you, and I'm doing great on my time here. I've got about seven minutes left. This comes from uh, Good to Great written by a colleague of mine, Jim Collins, looked at 1,143 companies, got it down to the top 11. These 11 were 400 to 700% better than their nearest competitor for a minimum of 15 years. How would you like to be 700% better than your nearest competitor for a decade and a half? That rocks. Uh, and when he looked at those companies, he said that he formed a thing he called the hedgehog concept, where these three circles overlap. The first circle is core competencies. What are you really good at? What are you world class at in whatever world you want to play in? Is it Gainesville? Is it North Central Florida? Is it Florida? Is it the United States? Is it the world? And I can tell you for most of us, it's the world, which is one of the really cool things I love about Gainesville is we are more and more every day playing on a global stage. We are more and more competing every day with China and India and Japan and all this thing. And I think it's awesome because that's the future and we are, we are going to be world class at that. So what are you really world class at? And by the way, this works the same with your career or your life. What are you genetically hardwired to do well? What are you really, really good at that whatever world you play in, you're awesome at it, that you're also deeply passionate about, that you love to do, that's fun, that's exciting, or if you have a company that your employees love to do, that they get excited about, they get jazzed, they're having fun, they're deeply passionate about it, that has the third circle, which I would say in business is the most important, that has a strong economic driver in the marketplace that people will pay for, that you can, that you can get customers who will willingly reach in their back pocket and give you $5, $50, $50,000, or $50 million because what you brought to the market is so incredibly valued. Now, for some of the entrepreneurs in the room, I want to share something with you. I love you. I do a lot of mentoring and coaching with entrepreneurs in town. I meet a lot of entrepreneurs that have those first two circles really well. They are really, really good at something that they're deeply passionate about. Unfortunately, nobody wants to buy it. That's called a hobby. 
okay? <laughs> you gotta have that third circle, because if people won't pay for it, you haven't built a business, you've built a neat little thing, which is fun and exciting, and I pat you on the back and it's cool, but it isn't gonna make you a billionaire or even gonna pay for lunch today. So you gotta have that third circle. Now this other one, K N N L, comes from a real close friend of mine, Tim Sanders, who wrote a great book called Love is a Killer App. And I say close friend, I've never, no I have met Tim face to face a couple of times, but he and I email back and forth, and we have now for 10 years, constantly, which is another amazing thing in this day and age. I'm, I'm blessed and fortunate to have some of the top authors and top thought leaders in the world as quote unquote friends who I correspond with every day on email. How did that happen? I sent them an email and asked them for help. That's all. So if there's someone out there anywhere who's doing really cool stuff, there's a chance for you to just pick up the phone or send in an email and get them on your team. And Tim's on my team and he wrote that book and here's his model. He says to be successful in your career and in your life you have to have three things, K, N, and L. The K stands for knowledge. You've gotta be bright, sharp, smart, and talented It's something that's highly valuable in the marketplace. You've gotta have skills, ideas, creativity, innovations, products, services that people highly value. So you're gonna be really, really good at something that's highly valuable in the marketplace. That's the knowledge. The next one, the N, stands for network. A lot of the right people need to know that about you. And by right people, the idea that I bring there is what I call hubs. People that by the nature of who they are, they don't tell a few people about how great you are, they tell a few thousand or a few hundred thousand. Uh, when I wrote my last book, Awesomely Simple, it's an okay book, you know, that's, it's okay. it was doing well, it won a couple awards, but it was like number 1100 on the bestseller list. You know, not exactly in fuego, I'm not really burning things up there, number 1100 on Amazon.com. Until uh, Guy Kawasaki, the former uh, marketing director and, and evangelist from Apple, tweeted it. He has 770,000 Twitter followers. I sold out in 45 minutes at Amazon.com and went to number 11 on the bestseller list. Okay. That, now, for you and your business, who are the hubs that you know? Who are the people that if you, if you were really, really good at something that was highly valuable and they knew it, as long as you have the third one, the L, which stands for love? Are you a loving, kind, honest person of integrity, a person of clear values, a person that you can trust, that's very, very good at something, that's highly valuable, and a lot of the right people know that about you? If you have those three things, you have any job in any company, in any country, at any salary you want, or you can build a massive business. I believe it's exactly the same for your business. What is your business really, really good at? That's highly valuable in the marketplace. Do you have a business of integrity and honesty that people can trust, a loving business, and, and that's a great word in business. Love and business go together very, very well. And do a lot of the right people know that about it? And then will they get on email and send an email to every single person they've ever met in their entire life to tell them that you rock? If you do that, you have just built an amazing referral engine and business engine that can drive massive growth and massive success. So the three questions you have to ask yourself every day, what did I learn today? Who did I meet today? Did I live my values today? If every day you challenge yourself on those three questions, I believe that they will build an incredible foundation for success. Now the last model I'm gonna share with you down here across the bottom comes from a really cool book by a guy named Dan Sullivan, who's the strategic coach and uh, he coaches really, really super uber successful real estate people, insurance people. I mean, you gotta be pulling down millions and millions of dollars to be able to do this kind of stuff that, that Dan teaches. And he wrote a book, How the Best Get Better. It's about 60 bucks. And I buy a lot of books, but 60 bucks for a book is a lot. It shows up, it's 29 pages long with big type blank pages, pictures on it. The only thing worse would have been if it had been a pop-up book. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I get, uh, and I start reading it. And I get to this thing, the key to referability. And I know that many businesses and most small businesses are driven off word of mouth. It's the key to referability. I go, gotta read this, gotta learn. Four things, show up on time, do what you say you will do, finish what you start, say please and thank you. Like, big deal, you know? Show up on time, do what you say you'll do, finish what you start, say please and thank you. And then I stopped and I went, out of all the vendors and all the businesses I deal with, how many can I name that consistently show up on time, do what they say, will do, finish what they start, say, and I added a little one, give it a little more than they expect. And the answer was almost none. Would you agree? This is another secret to success. It's so easy. Show up on time, do what you say you will do, keep your promise, finish what you start, say please and thank you, always give a little bit more than they expect. If you do that consistently every day in your life and in your job, you'll be in the top 1%, I absolutely guarantee it. 
Last slide, we'll finish and we'll go in with this. Years ago, one of my clients at said, uh, we're bringing 1,600 people in and we want you to quickly teach them the essence of excellence. The essence of excellence. Just like today, 20 minutes to give it, to really share some important idea, a lot of pressure. And I looked and I studied and I picked up the phone and I called the presidents of every company I worked with and I called people I trusted, I called my mastermind group, I called everybody, I compiled it all and I came up with what I call the three watchwords of excellence. And here they are, FDA, focus, discipline, action. You wanna be successful in life? You must be intensely focused on your philosophy of success, on your plan, on your values, on your vision. Intensely focused every day, constantly curious about how can I bring this into reality? The D then stands for discipline. A lot of people think about this stuff, but it, then it takes tremendous discipline to get up every day and follow the plan. Adjust the plan, analyze the plan, work the plan, work harder on the plan. Discipline, day in and day out, for days, for weeks, for months, for decades. But again, if you're pursuing your passion, it's never work, it's always fun. And then the last one is action. The amount of action you apply determines the amount of results you get. A Little bit of focus, not quite sure where you wanna go in your life or your business. A little bit of discipline, I know, but I'm, I'm not really good at it. I don't really stay focused. Or a little bit of action, the outcome is mediocrity. And once you start accepting mediocrity in your life, you become a magnet for mediocrity in your life. So what I want to leave you with today is, as far as I'm concerned, the key to success is defining it for yourself, creating a philosophy of success, creating a plan, and then being incredibly focused with tremendous discipline and apply massive action. And in 10 or 15 years, you'll make it. So that's what I'll leave you with. Have a great day.